Greetings, YouTube. Tis I, the Tater Beard, here to show you my latest creation. Let's begin. Okay, welcome back everybody to the second video in my Fringe series for the Mount Gambia Fringe Festival 2021. As I continue building my enchanted forest here in Blender, you can see the Burton tree from the last episode sitting there proudly. Now I'm just building the actual environment, just making a rough hewn forest floor. We're going to cover a lot of ground in this video. I'll uh, get this entire environment set up. I'll get the textures set up for the ground to make it look bumpy and natural and realistic. Get a nice stony earth and mud look happening. As I mentioned in the last video, I haven't done a lot of work with textures before, so this was a lot of fun to play with. I won't show all of it in this video again for time constraints. It's There was a, a long process of fiddling about with sliders and levels to get everything right, and I'll spare you from that. But we can see here I've added a moon. Just a large sphere in the background that I've gone into the sculpt mode and now I'm adding in all of the craters. Again, just making sure that everything looks good from the perspective of the camera as I make it. We've got the basic layout of the, the ground below. I've deleted a whole bunch of extra polygons from around the edge where we won't need it because it's all off camera. And the key to successful Blender projects is to optimize your number of polygons as much as possible so that your computer has a better chance of handling all that information. Just checking the lighting, that's looking nice. It's got the shadow on the moon, but I need that moon to be extremely bright because it's going to be almost the focal point of the entire piece. The main central figure will be standing in front of that moon, giving a nice silhouette effect. So after trying a few different methods, the solution I came up with for illuminating my moon was simply to point a gigantic spotlight at it and then turn the wattage up on it extremely high and it's worked really well. The material that I made, the surface, the texture for the moon itself, I turned up its ability to bounce light as high as it could go. And so now it is refracting all that light back down on the scene exactly as the real moon does. At this point I'd like to make a small apology. You'll notice we bounce around a little bit and we lose a few additions and stuff. One, there's a lot of time constraints involved with these videos being five to ten minutes long. But also I learned that my video recording software turns off every time you try to render a scene and I didn't learn that fact straight away. So there's a few times where we've missed a bit of footage and I apologize for that. Again you can see where we're going with all of this, just adding some textures now to the rocks, including that main rock I've made in the center of the scene. My main character will be standing on top of that. Now we're just adding some extra trees and details to the scene. One tree alone a forest does not make. So you can see there's an extra couple of Burton trees there and now I'm just making a few faceless ordinary trees. Just building the basic shape and poly sculpting and then moving them into a position that works well from the, the main perspective. Thank you. 
So for example, that's not going to do it all there because it's right in front of our main character. So I'll move it back. Give it a nice placement. Try to make the environment look a lot busier. And all these rocks were just, again, sculpted in the polysculpting mode. There's a tool called Flatten, which will actually flatten off the top of any surface that you put the brush on, allowing you to very quickly just chamfer those edges into a nice flat edge and get a, a nice, uh, almost cartoony rock look. Blender does come with a rock generator, but I tend to find that they all look the same and there's not a great deal of control unless you go into a million sliders, at which point you might as well sculpt it yourself. And that's what I've opted to do. And here we see in the render mode, this gives us a good preview of what it will look like in the final rendering, but we can still look around the scene. And you can see that moon is beaming down quite nicely. Everything else is looking nice and gloomy. And smash cut to adding some foliage. This is again, something that Blender has already automatically built in with a uh, foliage generator. You can affect the number of branches, the shape of the plant, all sorts of things. Very versatile. Very quick and easy way to add some plant life to a scene. Well, that's it for this video. Again, we covered a lot of ground here. We made most of the background. Next time we'll be making a small insect creature that I want to have buzzing around the scene just to add some more life to it. So remember to tune back in for that next video when it comes out. Until next time, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you can catch future releases. And also there's a link in the description below to my Colts page where you can find all my STL files that I share there for downloading and printing with a 3D printer. Thanks again everyone, and for now, this is the Taterbeard, signing off.